let's go over parametric programming. So as I said earlier, uh, parametric programming basically covers parts that are similar in dimension but vary in size. Um, the shape could be slightly different. Anyways, it's all covered in the background by the smart script. Uh, it's all put together with a simple user interface with multiple input fields where you can adjust the quantity without going through the part setup menu. Also, it has only one routine for easy validation. This right here is an example of the custom user interface that is typical to go on a machine. Um, that customer logo is usually replaced with the customer's actual logo. Uh, and as you can see here, there are many customized inputs. All of these inputs are scannable and tappable. All the inputs are sent directly to MeasureMind 3D and they're brought in through um, the user input fields and they can be output to your data. When a part number is scanned, it will change the enter part number here picture to direct either instructions or you know show you the picture of the part. You can inspect any quantity of parts as long as it's under 999. Um, each part also has tracking information with it. So not only will it track your lot number, your operator ID, and your machine number, it also index your parts. So if you have, a, let's say, a lot of 20, it will remember what part is what and also output that on your output. You have the ability to remeasure any one of those parts in that lot or resume a queue, queued inspection. This right here is an example of one of the applications we've done in the past. Um, this application in particular had 700 plus part families, or excuse me, 700 plus part numbers with five different part families, and that roughly equates to about five different routines. Um, it was able to run multiple parts. They usually were running in lots of 8 to 16. They could remeasure any part. Okay, so let's say that they ran a lot of 16 and part 15 fell. They could enter in part 15 and remeasure it. They could also resume an inspection at any point in time. And what I mean by that is, let's say hypothetical situation. I start a lot of 16 up. We have an operator from the floor who is doing a uh, first article, part, okay? They come up and they say, hey, I need to measure this part right now. So we pause our inspection, back out, rerun the routine, measure this new part, and then we can go back to our old measurement queue and rerun our old lot, resuming at the part that we left off at. Um, this also had the ability to track time. Um, the customer was very interested in worrying about how long the operator was spending on user interfaces. Kind of wanted to see if uh, they were taking an extra amount of smoke breaks or anything like that. So um, we had time tracking in the background. This particular application also integrated a temperature sensor, which was mounted to the side of the machine, and all the data was passed through to QCTEL. Um, and also, as you can see here, um, if you look in the red circle here, as soon as you enter the part number, a fixture setup appeared on the screen. So it told you what parts to put on the fixture in order to hold the part. Parametric program. All right, so let's give a little background on parametric program. Typical, the typical parametric program feeds off of a parameters file. Now this parameters file holds all the information that would be uh, prudent to measuring parts. Um, as you can see right here, we have our part numbers down the side. So this is large, medium, small. We're measuring the washers, by the way. This is a small first article, and this is a small. Notice how the tolerance is here. Different. Um, we have labels, what the dimension is, the nominal, the 
upper tolerance, the lower tolerance, and what units we want to display the output. Okay, so with that being said, let's run a part. I'm going to place the large washer on the stitch. We're going to hit run. All right, and we can either, you know, scan information or type it. So I type large. I can even go as far as putting a capital G randomly in there. Let's see if it still can run. It still understands it. And as you can see, it's going through and it's measuring the part. So you can kind of see the model window changing as it's measuring because the previously ran part was different. And if we look in our output window, it says inner diameter. So let's go back and look at this parameters file. Compare. Shrink this down here for a second. Okay, so we see the inner diameter is listed here as the inner diameter. We have the outer diameter listed here. They're both diameters, so you can see how that translates. Our nominals and our tolerance pass through correctly, and we have our actual our conceded computation. We're in millimeters. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and run that. Medium part. Before I run the medium part, I want you guys to notice one thing. Notice how the medium part is in inches. The labels change. And also, our nominals change because we're in inches. Our nominals are now in inches. So let's go ahead and place that medium wash on the stage. And we'll run this. I'm going to try and actually spell medium wrong. Let's see what happens when we click OK here. So notice how it says the part does not exist you want to end the routine. Well, because it's feeding off that, that file, it notices that the part number does not match anything. So it's ultimately getting into a, an error trap mode where it says you messed up. So the operator potentially can't run the wrong part. And if you read the message, it just says, that part does not exist. Do you want to end the routine? Well, if I wanted to end the routine, I'd click yes. It says, are you sure you want to cancel the part run? Oh, maybe I didn't, so I'm going to click no. It's going to bring you back to that, that uh, menu. And do you want to end the routine? No, I don't want to end the routine. And we're back at this position. So this has the error traps built into it. Um, and as long as the operator can read, they can get back here. Uh, also, you can completely disable those menus and just have the routine end if the operator puts in the wrong information. Uh, you can avoid uh, language barriers in that case. Um, so let's enter that medium part number. We'll actually spell it right this time. All right, so it adjusts the lights across the routine again. It's now measuring the medium part. So notice how the the circles inside the model window are changing size again. And notice how now we're in inches, if you look down here. The labels changed, okay, and, and our tolerance has changed. All right, so you can see how that, um, that works. Now, here's another added benefit of a parametric program. This routine, hypothetical situation, this routine is already validated at a customer site. The customer went through leaps and bounds to get this validated, but they have five new parts. Well, let's create a new part and add it to this text file. Notice how I am just copying the block and pasting it. I'm going to go in here, we're going to name this part. We're going to change the label to hello. All right, and you can also notice how I'm not really kind of following the column orientation. That doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is the punctuation. 
So as long as you don't change the punctuation, this should be very, very easy. All right, we actually want to measure a diameter here for the first measurement and a radius for the second. Because we're measuring a diameter, I need to double this. So do the math in my head. This can be around 16. So let's just put in 16. We'll make that 16.1. And uh, we're going to give it a different tolerance. Plus 0.2 and minus 0.5. All we have to do is save the parameters file. Let's go ahead and run the routine. Now, let's make sure I put that part on the stage. It just happened to be the, similar to the small part. So, I'm going to type part, because that's the part I just created. Click OK. Notice how it didn't yell at us, because it's now inside the data database. And we have our radius and diameter. Hello is a diameter. 16.1, we were well out of our tolerance. And goodbye was the inner radius. And you can see on the model window, it changed on the fly. And that's, that basically concludes our uh, demonstration.